Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Time to go inside the 10, the 8, the 7 or the 6 with the journos from the Sydney Morning Herald, Andrew Webster from the Australian, Peter. Brent Reid and from the Dad Telegraph, Wait. David Ricca. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, we have a date. Can I just clear up some confusion in regards to that date? Uh, the Emergency Operations Controller, uh, Mick Fuller, has sent the letter to say that things are OK. Does this restart to the season need to be rubber-stamped by either... Gladys Berejiklian or Brad Hazard? No. Of, no. You don't no. think so? No, I don't think it does at all. Mm. No, this is the thing, though. There's been this is so much jibber going around at the moment. It's, it's, it, like Did I just gone... add to that jibber? No, 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 no. But it's, it's understandable. <laughs> and I have to say, you know, the, the fact that we haven't got any games to cover, the media probably haven't been uh, helping it either because it's supposed to be a story that has something breaking by the hour. But at the end of March, Brad Hazard, the, pub, the health minister, gave a public order that allowed racing and rugby league and other, other football codes to continue. The government did not shut down rugby league. The pandemic expert that they employed did. But he has so also come out and said, no, oh, it's a health issue and I'm the health minister. Yeah. Sure, but in front, of, but in front if, as long as it's played in no crowds, and, and Peter Valenz, I think, said it to you, they could come yeah. back tomorrow if they wanted to. Yeah. I, still so, think you need a, I still think you need a rubber stamp by them. I think if the Premier's office rubber stamps it, it's just a better what look, I, what I think It's they a should better do. look. I get it, I get it, and that's the issue. And you talk to people at government and they will say that the NRL haven't been very good at handling this in terms of a public relations exercise. What they need to do, and I'd be more comfortable with a restart date of May 28 instead of a couple of weeks or a month later, would be if they were working hand-in-glove with the government about whether it's going to be safe to come back. So we don't have another Ruby Princess. So we don't have... The, they can explain to us why it's safe for them to come out and play. All the focus has been on the New South Wales government people. We haven't got the Victorian government on side. We haven't got the Queensland government. They haven't ratified anything yet. And we've got to think about all the interstate teams. Yeah. And that's a massive New Zealand issue as well. New Zealand. New Zealand as well. So it's been all about New South Wales. But whilst most of the teams are here, you've got to consider Queensland and Victoria. This weekend's huge. Is that still the biggest stumbling block then to, in regards to May 28? Absolutely. And, and what Reedy just touched on there, this weekend, the Easter long weekend, is absolutely huge both for the, the nation... Uh, as far as the infection spread, but also the NRL. They need the numbers to remain low as far as the infection spread is concerned. There are hurdles, Pete, as you alluded to, New Zealand Warriors. Mm. New Zealand are in lockdown until April 22. And have been very strong. Uh, if the Warriors come to... If they get to New Sydney, New South Wales, they then have to do 14 days in isolation here, which will, which will then slow down the process of the, the ability for them to, to get their preparation on. Mm. Queensland Government, what does it mean for the Brisbane Broncos, Cowboys, Titans? Still unclear. Melbourne Storm in Victoria. These are all the hurdles that need to be addressed well, next week. The Warriors week. need to leave, I think, Sunday week to be able to meet the time that's frame right. that's been set. Mm. So, so why not we wait? Why not wait till July? We still haven't worked out what we're doing with the broadcasters yet. They need to ratify everything as well. So they've got a hell of a lot of work to do in the next week, basic. Well, the, the next seven days, they need to sort out everything. This the is the issue a, a lot of the clubs... All the clubs are supportive of, of getting football back on, but they're very worried about the lack of detail. Mm. And right down to rehab and recovery. Yeah, players use beaches to do their rehab and recovery. They use swimming centres. Well, they're off the table. So what does rehab and recovery look like? All yeah. these... They do it in their garage. <laughs> yeah, all these smaller, uh, seemingly smaller issues yeah. are what the clubs are worried about, that, that detail that needs to be resolved in the next week. So if we take the best-case scenario that May 28 works and all clubs are able to play in that competition, what will it look like? Mm. <laughs> million dollar question. Million, yeah, exactly. It depends who you talk to, really. Yep. I mean, again, the broadcast, the meetings with the broadcasters this week are going to be, they will be pivotal because they'll whatever they pay for, that's probably what the comp will look like. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the favourite at the moment would be the 15 round scenario, but we've seen the backlash to that today. That you know, Nick Pilatus and others saying you can't count the first two rounds if that happens, there'll be a, revo a revolt if those two rounds get scratched, an absolute revolt from the clubs that have won games. So. As I said, this week they've got a lot to do the next week. I, 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 it's only for the fact that it's Nick Pilatus that's come out and said it and uh, and, this, and he's part of the Sydney Roosters, right? And we all know... That and they're, they're on zero points. They're, 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 <laughs> they're clearly becoming the club that most fans love to hate. And it's only the fact that... But Nick has a point. Nick has a point that if it is a 15-round competition, it means that clubs will almost have to win eight or nine of their 13 matches to make the finals. Now, the whole point of... Bringing back the footy is obviously for financial reasons, is largely, but also there needs to be some integrity about it too. And if you're telling fans that your, your clubs 
got to win nine of 13 to make the finals before a ball's even be kicked. Why would fans be overly excited to see the footy back? But also, what about the sponsorship flow on? Why would sponsors want to stick with their club? They'll be asking for a percentage decrease mm. on, their, on their input for the fact that they won't be able to make the final. Can I, I just throw to... some fuel on the fire? Wouldn't it be actually the purest competition that we've had? Because our competition is inherently yeah. an unfair one because mm. you play everybody once, then you play half of everybody again. Yeah. Mm. To play everybody once, it's actually... I, and I know, I, I know that it's convoluted and, and two back here type thing, but... To play everybody once or play everybody twice is actually the fairest. I think either way you go with whether you have stunned on zero points or whatever happened in the first two rounds, I think league clubs, I think, need to, I think they need to suck it up. Yeah. Either way, you know, it's a, it's, these are extraordinary times and if they want to get back on, I think whatever points they start on is the least of their concerns. Well, what I think this will evolve into, though, is will this be the legitimate premiership of past years? And it I won't be either I, way. I don't think it, won't it will be. be. Either way. Well, Paul Gallen raised that point during the week. Wanted to know, you know, should this be a Telstra Premiership? Um, certainly, with asterisk, asterisk, ask yeah. next to it. Well, I think it will be. It will. Be, it will yeah. be. It will be do always we, there. Do we asterisk the year in the Melbourne Storm were eliminated from the competition when Canterbury were eliminated? From the, they're not asterisks. So I don't. I don't. Gal sitting over there, he's staring at me right now. But <laughs> I don't agree with him on this. Come one. on, because the only, aim you, up. <laughs> uh, the only fair, the only way this is fair is if we play every game. It, the twenty four. Round competition. I don't think that's going to happen. So, as Webby said, you've got to suck it up. And if you win this comp playing 15 games and you win the and you make the finals and you win the fi win the grand final, to me that's a fair competition. I, I don't think it needs an asterisk. Come, Come on, these, these, Sorry, two are, these two are going at oh, each other. Well, off know, air there's there's, there's and massive and issues. And going, I disagree. There's massive issues with scrapping the opening two games. What do you do with Nathan Brown who's suspended? What do you do with Tavita Pangai? Who got suspended? Explain it to Reid Murray. Do we, do we allow them to play? Do we allow them to play? When we, what about Jaden Bradley? He tore his ACL. So the, you cannot scrap those opening two games because if you do, you open a Pandora's box. You know, do, do we scratch the, the guys who got suspended in those opening two games? You've got to because those games don't count. To tell the fans you paid the money for those first two games, you can have your money back. It's impossible. Calm it's implausible. Calm down. <laughs> oh, sorry. But, mate, I wish we had another 10 minutes because, <laughs> because at the moment the answer is still a pineapple. Oh, yeah, exactly. but, 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 but we have a date. We yeah. have a date. Webby, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave Rico, happy Easter to you, you and your family. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back with more on the show in just a moment.